done is, if you just look to see what was going on in society when they were discovered, it gives you um, immense clues. Yeah, because that's quite fun. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Because yeah. when in 1930, of course, we, we had the rise of the Third Reich. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the more you know representative of the more powerful, controlling side of Pluto. Mm -hmm. More positively, we had the birth of depth psychology, and. It's, it's almost like um, Pluto, the dark lord of the underworld, is a symbol for um, our shadow sides, what's very shadowy in the unconscious. You know, those, those sort of, um, when we get sort of jealous or um, the more darker emotions, yes. that kind of thing. Now, um, so therefore, we didn't, um, it was like we tuned in more to that kind of energy after 1930 and people became more interested in what motivates us psychologically um, and so therefore it's been a fantastic tool because in the unconscious in the shadow uh, we don't just have our dark sides we also have our greatest treasures if you like and in fact the word pluto literally translates as riches and so therefore, a lot of gifts and talents. It's like if you if you bring something to the surface and, and view it, shine a light on it, and view it consciously, then you can transform it. Mm -hmm. Then you've got choices, and yes. you're not just acting out blindly. So with these two planets, um, we've got Pluto, that, that sort of raw libidinal energy. It's the, it's the planet which rules birth, death, sex, all the fundamental stuff of life. And there was a sexual uh, revolution in the 60s as well, wasn't there? Well, if you mm. think of the combination mm -hmm. of Uranus, the, the revolutionary, mm -hmm. uh, yes, exactly, that, that um, uh, term was coined at mm -hmm. that time. Yes. Um, so 47 years later, because Uranus moves quicker than Pluto, and it's moved away from Pluto, it's now formed a 90 degree angle in the sky. So therefore, instead of those two energies working together, they're working against each other. So on the one hand, you've got Pluto in Capricorn, which to me speaks very much of, of a government now having a lot of power and control um, versus, and, and Uranus moved into the fiery sign of Aries in March this year. So. Uh, the previous seven years, it was in the sign of Pisces, which is, I don't think it was very happy in Pisces, no. because Uranus, the awakener, the truth seeker, mm -hmm. in a sign more associated with mysticism and, um, you know, uh, dreams-like states, you can't really find the truth there. So now it's in the fi fiery sign, warlike sign, if you like, of Aries, it's not going to sort of turn over or, or, you know, it's going to stand up and fight for truth. So if you can imagine, it's like the clash of the titans, isn't it? Yeah. Because the more people are going to rebel, the more Pluto is going to clamp down because Pluto is also the planet associated with control through fear. Yes. And we're seeing that, aren't we? I mean, we, we saw that done. with the riots, you know, and now all of a sudden we have we must be doing this, we must be doing that, take away the rights for this, you know, use water cannons for that. Um, and, yes, very much fear-based. And yes. and everybody's in a frenzy as well. What what must be what must be done? What must we do? You know, oh, it's almost like um, people are begging. Begging, please take my control. rights away. Yeah. It's just incredible. But it the is. thing is, because of these two energies, or about the more Uranian revolutionary type people are never going to stand for that kind of level mm -hmm. of control. Yeah. Um, so it is a recipe for disaster, and I and I think that. Um, yeah, it's not just the Arab uprisings, and I thought it was very interesting the way that um, just before Uranus moved into Aries, we had the um, Egypt uprising, yeah. and they were relatively peaceful, because that's yeah. when it's just in Pisces. Yes. As soon as um, it, it switched into over. Aries, it's yes. become much more violent. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Mm. And, I mean, what do you think, how do you see this sort of... Um, 
translating itself as um, uh, Uranus moves through Aries, do you think we're going to start to see a lot more firepower going on as well? Do you yes. think maybe World War Three might be coming up? I don't know. People say all sorts of things. But um, I'd like to think that it wouldn't, but this kind of configuration, especially when Saturn was, was involved, mm -hmm. um, be, I mean, before World War One and World War Two, there was this configuration with, with um, Pluto square Saturn. It's very heavy, very, um, you know, all, difficult, very, very... It's always a time of hardship, which we are also seeing. I know that um, Saturn has now moved out of orb of being part of that, um, what's called a T-square, um, but, yeah, we're really into the austerity years, there's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. Um, in terms of, like, 2012, I think we, we are already in it. Yeah, I, b I agree with you. I think it's a period it's mm -hmm. rather than a day. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. And for those of us, and, and the other interesting thing about the uh, chart for 2012, um, when it's viewed from London, is that Uranus and Neptune are on the ascendant. Mm. Um, so Uranus is not degrees Pisces, so it's returned to its own sign. It's, it's returned home after 165 years travelling mm -hmm. around the solar system. So very powerfully placed. But it's with Chiron, the wounded yeah. healer. Yeah. So positively, Neptune is about uh, working selflessly, showing deep compassion and love. Um, more negatively, it's the planet to do with disillusion and illusion and deceit. Yes. And because it's combined with Chiron, there's an awful lot of people, and this is building day by day, who have the most massive expectations for 2012 about how they're going to move to the fifth dimension. Yes, yes. You know, how, how uh, ascension. Yeah. We're, you know, it's, it's like their, their um, beliefs that those Neptunian longings to be rescued are so strong and powerful. But um, I just wonder, because it's with Chiron, I can imagine an awful lot of people waking up on the 22nd of December and nothing has happened. <laughs> Except maybe more rights being taken away and <laughs> yes. those types of things. I think yeah. it's much more real world. And I think that uh, in the whole cosmic scheme, I think it feels more correct that we do the hard work ourselves rather than just being waiting, waiting to be rescued or saved. I agree, and I and you know, as I say to to people, we all have to be getting on the same page um, in respect to what is going on out there. And there's still so many people confused. They're still not seeing it. Um, they still believe the economy is going to rescue itself. Um, and there's just so many so many different angles to be um, brought together. And it's just not going to happen from this point until you know December 2012. That's just not going to happen in a year. Um, no, you know, no. And we have to be realistic about that. Yes, we do. We do. And I think this is perhaps a long, hard process. It's, it's almost like um, we're, we're quite teenagery, and we need to gain more wisdom and consciousness in what's going on. And we're certainly being given plenty of opportunity for soul-searching at the moment. And uh, the other thing I'd like to say about Uranus-Pluto, I think that Uranus is exposing the shadow of Pluto. Mm. It's, it's like mm -hmm. the shadow side of society is being exposed. Why is it that, that um, we saw the scenes we saw last week? Yeah. These have to be addressed. Yes. And it's, it's vital that we, that we deal with the real-world situation and the fact that governments do lie to us. You know, this, this is all very powerful stuff. And it's about waking up and seeing that we each as individuals have to evolve. And, and that's the best way, I think, to work on it, is to become as conscious and aware of our own motivations and our, mo our own actions. And then we can really help change the world, you know, because mm -hmm. then we, everybody can be an example. But there are so many things in our society that, um, you know, 
or, or being exposed to the whole Murdoch stuff, you know, and yes. expenses. Yep. It seems like the well, old think, yeah. way of, of keeping things hidden, and but it's wrong. And the thing about Uranus is Uranus is the truth seeker. And the truth will out. Yes, most definitely. And we've got about, what, seven years of that with um, Uranus in, in Aries? So yes, and yes, we just we and we've just started. We do, and it's a very long square <laughs> with Pluto. It goes right yeah, through to yeah. um, 2015. Yeah. Um, but next year, in particular, I was looking because I, I mentioned earlier about how, with long-term transits like that, full moons and new moons can really constellate the energy in a very fiery way. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was fascinating the way. Um, you know, it's the Diamond Jubilee yeah. next year. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at all the new moons and full moons for next year, and the 4th of June, is the chart for that is just incredible. It's so uh, dynamic and um, a, lot of, a lot of volatile energy in it because, it, it, again, it's square Mars. Uh, when we had a, an aspect very, very similar to this, um, we had the 7-7 seven, seven bombing. Right. So it, it, there's potential there for a lot of unrest, mm -hmm. a lot of unrest. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's very volatile. And I was thinking that with the Diamond Jubilee, there is going to be a lot of security, um, you know, that weekend. Yeah. They've given us a four-day weekend. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, that's even before the Olympics begin. Yes. I, I, ha I imagine it's going to be quite tense in this country um, next year. Uh, that's just the feeling that I'm getting. And, um, you know, a lot of people will have to be on their guard because if, if you step out of line, you might find yourself um, caught in the web of, of everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was just hearing on the news um, earlier today, I think someone who was on Facebook who just said, let's mm. do the riots or something, is now being charged for, for you know, for, for speaking out. Yes. Um, so, yes. So these are the times that we are in. and. Yes. Uh, and I think you've done a great job highlighting for us tonight, um, you know, the basic astrology of, of what you're seeing. Of course, there's a lot more that we could say, and the hour has literally flown by, <laughs> yes. and we've run out of time. But I think um, the audience hopefully would have got a, a taste of um, what, what, you've, what you can offer, what you've um, presented to us this evening. So I think um, it's excellent stuff. So just tell us your website address, Helen, please. Okay, it's at www.astrologicalinsights.co.uk. And um, that article that I, you know, I, I've, I've read your article and I've, obviously I've seen you with your lecture, but um, the article can be found online as well, can't it? Sure, sure. I've it's been like referring to website with and, all of this uh, information. Yes, I'm more than happy to see people in person. Yes, and you do readings. So, I do. Um, you know, if, if you liked what you heard tonight, please do contact Helen. She's a great astrologer and very knowledgeable. So, uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me here this evening. And um, hopefully I might be able to get to talk to you again sometime soon. Maybe we can do a follow-up and see where we are with things, <laughs> you know. Sure, it's and moving very fast. It is, <laughs> most definitely. Okay, thank you, Valentine. Thank you, Helen. Okay. Bye now. Right, so we've had a really interesting show, and um, hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, I love talking about astrology. It's one of my favorite things in the world. So um, that's it for tonight. Um, we'll be back for the next show, not next week, but the week after next. So as usual, in the meantime, um, keep your eyes on the stars. <laughs> One station, many communities.